All right, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Claudio Berstein from here, from Biome Systems, uh, welcoming you to one of our new series of webinars uh, covering converged and separated networks in Tessera. Uh, before uh, I begin, uh, I would like to check, as always, if you can hear me okay. Uh, on your console, there is a little icon that allows you to raise your hand. So please click on that. That will let me know if you can actually are listening to me right now. All right. I see a couple hands there. Let me see. Yeah. I see a couple of hands coming up. Okay. So you can hear me. Okay. Uh, I have scheduled this class for two hours. It's probably going to take less than that. I would say a little bit over an hour, but I don't think that it's going to go, it's going to go that long. Uh, also, uh, there is a chat window also in your uh, in your console. Uh, I have set that up so whatever you type there comes only to me. Uh, so if you have any questions during this presentation, please type it there. I'll keep the chat window open on my side. So if I see a question come up, uh, I'll try to answer as they uh, as they come. All right. So with that said, let's get started. And why do we need to learn uh, to learn uh, about uh, converged and separated networks? Well, if you have done or built or even seen our TCR systems, uh, you probably know that we do use ADB for audio transport between servers and between servers and expanders. So we use ADB as our backbone for digital audio transport between devices. Now, depending on the installation, whether you are uh, uh, whether you have a very big installation where you might have equipment in different locations or the, the layout or how you might need to connect these devices to an existing control network, it might be desirable or required that the ABB is completely separated from the control or other legacy traffic. In some instances that is not an issue because we are building a complete and separate AV network for our system, but there are some other cases where we are integrating that to an existing network where other traffic is going on and we might need to keep ADB separated from that. So we're going to cover a couple of things uh, before so we can actually get a little bit of a better understanding of what we're talking about. I'm going to talk a little bit about device types and network connections. So why, where's the difference? What, what made us go this route and create uh, these options of either using converged or separated networks. And then we're going to cover converged networks and separated networks. And I want to show you the diagrams and some of the, the rules and stuff. And I'm going to do a couple of demos with a system that I have here. So here in my rack, I have uh, two Tessera Fortes. I have an XAEC, uh, an audio expander. I have an X out. And I also have a Tech One remote controller. Uh, and I have two switches. So I have a, a normal uh, Linksys uh, PoE switch and also a, a, a Netgear AVB switch and a couple of uh, PoE injectors. So I'm going to be using I'm going to be using that. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a webcam that I can show you the rack. Uh, it's not very pretty anyway, uh, but I'll tell you roughly how things are wired uh, together. So let's start with the device types. Uh, in Tessera, we actually separate device in, in two big types, and those are server device types and expander, uh, and ex expander type devices. And the easiest way that we can recognize which one is which is that a server type device is any device that has DSP processing capability. So it can do audio processing. We can EQ things, we can add mixers, we can add processing blocks. That is what we call a server type device. So it's server type devices in our line would be basically the Tessera server, the, the, ser, uh, the server I.O. and the Tessera Forte uh, because those are the devices that can process that can process audio and, 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 and do some other stuff. In the case of the expanders, an expander is a device that doesn't have any DSP processing capabilities. It's only inputs or outputs of some sort, whether it's audio or it's control. Um, so in our case, we're going to be talking only um, about the audio remote expander. So we're going to be talking about the X-in, X-out, X-io, X-aec, and X-mod. There is a couple of other expanders that follow into the expander type 
category like the tech, the tech one and the X logic, but I'm not considering those because those being control devices, uh, they don't transport any audio. They don't. They don't need an AVB network. They don't. Basically, the AVB network is completely meaningless to those. Now, the other big difference between these devices, server devices and, and expander devices, is that server type devices they will have at the very least two control uh, ne uh, network interfaces. We're going to have a control interface that is the one that we use to connect our computer to, and we're going to have an AVB if we want to expand that system, whether it's to other servers or to expanders. In the case of expander devices, we only have one single port that we call AVB control. And that's where things get a little bit, a little bit tricky. So what is the role of these devices? Well, all the server device type, all the, all the server type devices, one of the things that they do is that they serve as a proxy for the expander devices. What that means is that the expander device is pretty much a really nice box that doesn't know what to do until it's actually talking to a server device. So for instance, if we have a system that had a Tessera, uh, a Tessera server and, and a remote expander, and we connect with our computer and we send a command and say, hey, I want to mute channel number one on that expander, that communication goes to the server. And then the server commutes, communicates that to the expander and say, hey, you're going to mute channel number three. And the expander then is going to say, OK, yeah, unmute it. And we relay that message back to the computer. So everything that the expander device is doing is actually managed and proxied by the, um, directly by the server. Even more, uh, if you do a firmware upgrade, you only upgrade the server devices. And the server devices then, when you connect an expander, will serve that firmware upgrade to the remote expander. So automatically, when you connect them, uh, you try to do anything, it will push that firmware directly to the, um, to the expander. So the expanders by themselves, they cannot do anything. Now, if we look at the back of an expander, we're going to see that we have a single, uh, a single port that is labeled ABB control. And that is it. So, but in the back of the server, we have two ports. We have a control port and we have an ABB port. So which port am I going to be using? Am I going to be using the control port or am I going to be using the ABB port? And actually, that's where some of the confusion may come and that's, that's where pretty much the, the entire concept of having co uh, converged or separated networks comes into play. So one option will be that we manage, basically we do all that control communication with the expanders via the control network. So in this case, since we still need the ABB network for audio transport, that means that both the ABB and the control network, they need to see each other because we're using both of those ports, one to transport audio and the other for control, so they need to see each other so the, uh, the expander will come up. The other option would be to manage the audio remote expander via the ABB network. So not only we're transporting audio over that network, we're also controlling from that network. And you might say, well, couldn't it be the easiest or the best way to do it the second way, uh, doing it in, and doing everything over the ABB network? And probably uh, I would tend to agree to that, that basically that would probably be the best, the best way to do it. But in the beginning, that was not available in Tessera. This is something that came in, uh, that was added as a feature in the latest version, in version 2.4. So the upper option, managing audio over control networks and transporting over ABB, is what we call converge network. And we call it converge because, well, the control network needs to see the ABB network. Uh, the other one, where we are managing audio remote expanders via ABB network, that means that, well, the control network can be doing anything because we only require the ABB network to control those remote expanders, and that's what we call separated networks, right? So let's get directly into converged networks. Uh, and as I said a moment ago, this is the only option that we have in the Sierra 2.3 and older. So if you're running older version of the software and older version of firmware, uh, Converge Networks is the only option that we have. We didn't have the option to go separate. 
uh, from version 2.4 and beyond, is, it is the default option. And the reason that we kept it as a default option is because if you already have a system that is working, uh, we didn't want you to go there, upgrade firmware, and, some, and, and suddenly everything stops working because you don't have the correct network topology. So that way, if you have a system that is already working and it was installed before 2.3 or at 2.3 and you update firmware, you're not going to break anything. Everything will still work exactly the way that is working right now. And in this case, basically, all remote audio expanders are managed via the control network. So we use the control network to talk to them. But we also need the AVB network because all the transport is done over that AVB network. So in this case, we need an AVB switch. There's pretty much no way around it. And the simplest diagram would be what you see on screen. <clears throat> and in this case, you can see that I have, let me get my pen here, uh, that we have an AVB switch that connects everything together. And from, I'm actually using a Tessera 40 in this, in this example, it could be a Tessera server, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, we have both the control and the AVB ports connected to this AVB switch. And if I have remote expander, that remote expander is also connected to the same switch. So in this case, we are mixing control and AVB in this switch, and that is what we call a converged network. And to control the system, well, we're going to be connecting our computer. But remember that our computer is talking only to the uh, to the TCR forte. All the communications to the expander are going through the TCR forte. Now, if we had a bigger system, more devices, probably we would need a um, we would need a different um, we would need a different topo a little bit of a different topology. Maybe we don't want to put everything on an AVB network. And in that case, you will need something like this. You will need an AVB network for all AV transport, and you can see that still I have my, uh, I still have, oops, I want to work. Uh, I have my AVB here is connected to my AVB, um, AVB network, and uh, my remote device is also connected to the AVB network, my, but my control port is connected actually to the switch that is only for control. Now, for this to work, I need this link between these two switches, all right? So this is actually linking. So even though this switch on the left is not an AVB switch, this allows control communications to go over AVB, and that way we can actually see and control this uh, expander. If we didn't have this link, what would happen is that we are not going to be able to discover those remote, uh, those remote devices. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm going to do a little demo. And actually, I, uh, I did prepare a little file that I want to use. Um, I told, as I said before, I have two TCL Fortes, uh, uh, TCL Forte VI, TCL Forte TI, an XAC, an X out, and a Tech one in, uh, in my rack. Uh, they are not configured, so I just, this file, I just prepared, I just connected everything together so it would compile and he would use all, all that uh, together. So the first thing that I'm, that I'm going to do, I'm actually uh, to disconnect one thing here, one second. Um, I'm going to go here to device maintenance and let this go discover. And I can see right here that I have my two, um, my two devices. So it's showing me that I have here my two, de uh, tesia, uh, my two tesia Fortes. One is a TI and the other one is a VI. So both of my devices are there. Now, I don't have a connection, a link between, uh, between, my, um, between my AVB and my control. So if I go to uh, remote devices, if I go to remote devices, I still can see them. Uh, but if I wanted to control them or program them, I would not be able to do, uh, to do anything. Now, I left all my equipment to the default. So notice here that the IP addresses of all these devices, right here, all these devices are actually on 169.254. That those are all linked local addresses. So those addresses were all self-assigned on those uh, remote devices, right? 
So if I go back here, I can also oh, come on. I can also check, for instance, if I go to one of these devices and I go to network settings, I can see also that I have that at obtain an IP address automatically and it's using I 169.254 address. So pretty much everything, I have everything as it comes from the factory, right? So if I got all this equipment directly from the factory, I could connect everything to an ABB switch and pretty much that's what would happen. I would go online. Uh, my network interface is also to obtain an IP address automatically. I can discover my devices. Everything is perfectly fine. My tech one is connected to the control network, but again, it's also in the same in the same subnet. So everything is actually seeing everything. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just uh, I'm going to assign this equipment. So I'm going to go to system equipment table. So I can assign the serial numbers, and I see here that I have my two test serial four tests that I require, and my X out, I haven't assigned anything. So I am going to assign the test serial four test. I'm going to assign the test serial four test. And then the X out and the X AC, not only I need to assign them, I also need to tell them who is going to be the proxy. And the proxy is which of these two four tests is going to be controlling that expander. Remember that I said that if I control from my computer, the control goes through the forte, well, I need to tell which forte is going to be, and it could be any of the two. It doesn't necessarily, uh, I need, I don't need to spread them out. There's, there's no rule. It can actually be any, any of them. So I'm going to say that this is going to be controlled by the, the CR forte VI and the XAC. I'm going to assign it, and I'm going to tell it also the VI. So both of them are going to be, be proxy directly from the, from the VI. And then what I'm going to do is just, yes, I'm going to send uh, I'm going to send this configuration to the system, and if everything goes okay, basically should send, and it should ask me if I want to start audio, and everything should be, there it is, so it actually sent everything, so when I get this message that I want to start audio, that means that the file was already sent to the system, everything is working, everything is, it's, it's ready, it's ready to go. So in this case, uh, if I wanted to control gain or go to turn phantom power or anything like that, basically if this control is, I'm controlling from the computer, it's going through the control network to the TCA Forte, and the TCA Forte VI is the one telling the remote, hey, this is what you are going to be, to be doing. I also, as I said, in this section I have a tech one. Uh, I added a couple of controls. So for instance, I can see here I'm moving the fader on the, the first one on the left. I am moving directly from the tech one, so I have a little, a little, uh, uh, a little remote, and actually I have a tone generator here. So if I unmute this and set this to zero, I should see signals there. So I am actually connected, passing audio. You can see those meters on the right. Okay, so this is kind of like an easy way, pretty much simple. You just go connect everything to your AVB network. You're ready to go. If you have a bigger system, you would need two switches. You would need a control switch and an AVB switch, so all your AVB ports will go to that AVB switch, and all your control items will go to the control, and you can connect those two switches together. Certainly, this brings a little issue. What if you have a very simple, sim simple single system that you need, let's say, only one Tessera Forte and one X in, because you need four extra inputs? Well, the problem with this uh, this case is that for that very simple system, you still need an AVB switch. There's no way around. There will be no way around it uh, because that's the only way that we could communicate with that expander. So that made simple small systems a little bit more expensive because, well, there was the extra expense of getting an AVB switch for that uh, for that to work. All right. So I'm going to go back here and talk a little bit about some of the rules of those converged uh, networks. First, the, the, the obvious one that I, that I have said a couple of times, we do need an AVB switch, whether it can be a Netgear, it can be a um, uh, Extreme, or uh, it, whenever we were, uh, uh, people were doing kind of like the small, the, uh, before, before we actually were able to do separated networks, uh, there was a switch that came out uh, about a year ago, or a little bit less, the MOTU switch that has a, a, a four or five port uh, uh, AVB switch, people have been using that one. But in any case, if you were going to do converged networks, you need 
an ABB switch. And the expander is managed by the, uh, via the control network. So in that case, the control network needs to see the ABB media network. So you need to have a connection between those two. The other thing that is very important is that all devices must be in the same subnet. So in my case, I left them at the factory default to obtain an IP address. And I showed you that all my devices were in the 169.254. If I want to use fixed IP address for my devices, one again, all my devices would have to would need to have uh, an IP address in the same uh, in the same subnet. If I need to set fixed IP address for my devices, I need to start by setting up the device IPs of my remote devices. If I do first my Tessera Forte or I do first my um, my server uh, before doing the remote devices, I will not be able to discover the remote devices. So remote devices need to pass first to the new IP address before I do the uh, the rest, All right? Uh, so, and then we get to separated networks. Uh, separated networks, as I said, uh, is an option that became available when we uh, when we launched the Sierra 2.4. Uh, so it's going to be an, an option from 2.4 uh, um, moving forward, and in this case, we are now we can we have the capability of managing the remote expanders via the AVB network. So in this case, control and AVB network, uh, control and AVB are all done over that AVB network. So we don't need that communication between the control and the AVB. Network. So in this case, we can have a system that is pretty similar to what we had before. Uh, in this case, I have um, I have an ABB switch here and a control switch here, and my connections are pretty uh, are pretty similar. You can see that I have my ABB here that is going to the ABB network, and my remote device is connected here to my ABB network. My computer is connected to the control network and this is what is con going to my uh, my Tessera Forte. But the important thing here, there is no link here in the middle. Nothing is connecting those two switches together. They are completely, completely separate. So this could be um, this could be one of those cases where the control network is an existing building network. So for instance, you are installing multiple um, meeting rooms in, a, in an office building uh, the control network could be the existing network that they already have for their computers, printers, and all that stuff, so you can control your system from whatever you want, but then you have an AVB network that is completely separate for audio transport between those different rooms and, the, and, and, and devices. With separated, bon uh, separated uh, networks, we do have an extra bonus. If we, have, if we want to make that little system that would have a single Tessera 40 and a single expander, now we don't need that switch. Now we can actually go straight from my Tessera server, from the AVB port, directly to my expander. I would need still a PoE injector, because remember that these devices, the, the four channel devices, are all PoE devices, so you will need a PoE injector. But the PoE injector is a standard PoE injector that, uh, that supplies enough power, and that's pretty much it. You don't need a switch, and that's way, way uh, less uh, expensive than uh, that getting an AVB switch. And then you can connect your computer directly to the control port to control, uh, to control that system. Right? So in this case, they are completely, completely separated. Now, I'm going to go here back to my system. Uh, where is it? Right here, all right? And I'm going to disconnect from this, and I want to apply, let's say, that I want to separate my networks. There's a couple of rules uh, on separating networks. We're going to refine those in just, a, in just a little bit. And one of the important rules that we have is that since we're going to be, and, and this is kind of like a, something that relates more to how computers in general work, because imagine, if you think about it, a, a, a server at the Sierra Forte or at the Sierra uh, server or server I.O., it's, it's pretty much a computer. If you, in a computer, set two network interfaces in uh, two different IP addresses that are in the same subnet, uh, you're going to have communication issues. And the reason is, well, there is a routing table inside that computer that tells, well, if I need to communicate, I'm going to prefer to go through this port or the other. So if both are in the same subnet, 
the computer is going to make a choice where that is going to go, and not necessarily it's going to go through the set through the intended port that we want it. It might go through the other one. So whenever we're using separated networks, the first thing that we need to think about is that those networks, they, I need to have different IP addresses. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to, um, to uh, perform device maintenance. I'm going to select my Tessera 40 VI. I am going to select here network settings. Now, in the, bottom, in the bottom, it says interface IP configuration. I can see that I have my interface set to obtain an IP address automatically. And here, now, I have under interface ID, I can select which network I want to adjust. And I can select the media IVB, and I can see here that it's disabled. When it's disabled, is when I'm using converged networks. So the first thing that I want to do is that I'm going to change the IP addresses of my devices, and I'm going to put them on a separate, uh, on a different subnet. So I'm going to change the control network for this one. I'm going to say use the following IP address, and I'm going to set it to 192.168.2.102, right? So I'm going to click OK. This is going to take a little bit, uh, a little bit of time uh, as we are writing that to the device. And probably what would happen is that at some point it's going to time out and the unit is going to disappear. And the reason that that is happening is that, well, I'm moving the unit to a completely different subnet. The unit is getting that information, but uh, my computer has not changed, so I cannot, I will not be able to, um, I, I will not be able to find it. So I'm going to wait here one second until this is, gets written. All right, so it says failed uh, to change the device network, and that's, as I, again, this is because now the unit, um, uh, the, the unit is now on a different on a different subnet. Uh, somebody's asking if this session is going to be on the YouTube. I am a rec actually recording it, so I'll probably clean it up and then uh, and then post it. So now it opens again the device maintenance, and you see that one unit disappeared, and that's the other unit that I already changed the IP address, so it's in a different subnet. So I'm going to select now the second unit. I'm going to go to network settings. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say select uh, use the following IP address. I'm going to use 192.168.2.103 for this. So I'm going to click OK. And as I, as I said, in this case, I don't need to wait because my both both of my units are already moved. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to open my uh, my network and sharing center. I'm going to go to my uh, network interface. I'm going to select properties, TCP/IP before properties, and I'm going to change my network interface. I'm going to say Let's use 192.168.2.100. So it's in the same subnet as I put my two devices. I'm going to click OK, close here, close here, close here. And now this should time out, but then I should be able to go back and discover everything. Uh, I have a question here. If connection is set to separate but still have the linkable cable, AVB, and control, is this going to create a loop and cause network problems? Actually, if you, um, if you uh, set separated networks and you leave your connection together uh, the, um, and there is an IP conflict or there is an IP conflict, the software will automatically deactivate the AVB network. And it's going to tell you. Uh, so it's going to tell. It's going to. It's going to check that, and it's going to tell you that actually it failed, and uh, and it has to be in a different in a different subnet. So I'm going to go back to device maintenance, and I can see here I have both of my devices. Uh, I can check the device IP addresses. So if I go here to network settings, I can see that this one is actually in 102, and I can see that this one is in 103. Uh, I have a fault here for some reason on the VI. Uh, where is the fault? Unable to communicate to expanders. All right. Now, the reason that is giving me that fault that is unable to communicate to expanders is because, remember, I changed the IP address of these two devices. The expanders are on a different subnet. I left the expanders in the 169.254 address, right? So this is what would happen if I change the IP address uh, of 
my servers before I change the IP address of the expander devices. That basically, I will see my devices, but I will not be able to see my expanders. So, so the only way, and the only way around it is to go back to to the um, to the default IP address, set the IP address of the expanders, and then and then move. So remember that my expanders, I didn't change them, so they are still in the 169.254 address, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back here. I want to select. Remember that I set both of my uh, my remote expanders to be proxied by this TCA Forte VI. So one of the interesting things is that since those two remote devices are going to be proxied only by the Forte VI, I only need to set separated networks on that device. I don't need to set it on all of them. You can set it on all of them if you wanted to, but you need to do it at least on the device that is serving for the expanders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this unit. I'm going to go back to network settings, and I'm under interface IP configuration. I'm going to select the media AVB uh, network. Now, when I enable, it's going to give me a um, it's going to be, give me a warning. It's a well, control signal is enabled on AVB network interface. That the serial devices AVB and control port must be plugged onto different Ethernet broadcast domains. Otherwise, the device will not respond to any control communications. Do you want to enable? So before I click yes, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to unplug my link between the two uh, between the two switches. So now my switches are not connected uh, to each other. So I'm going to click yes. And here I get the chance to either obtain an IP address automatically or use the following IP address. So here I could actually set an IP address uh, a fixed IP address for the ABB network if I want it. Remember that if I'm going to do that, I also need to change the IP address of my remote devices. So I will still need to discover them first. Since I left them at the obtain an IP address automatically and they are in the 169.254, I'm going to leave this at an obtain an IP address automatically. And I'm going to just click OK. And that's going to write into the address. So, uh, that probably serves as a response on how do you manually set the IVB network IP address. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the, uh, is that if you are using an AVB switch just for audio transport and you're going to keep that separated, in the majority of cases, there's not going to be a need to set a fixed IP address for the um, uh, uh, there's not going to be a need to set a fixed IP address for the AVB network because basically you connect them all to the uh, to the same switch. They're going to get a link local address uh, and they will be communicating with each other. So I think that the only reason that you would want to do that is uh, if you want to segregate the network for any for any particular any particular reason. So it wrote the changes. So now I can go here and. If I go to remote devices, I still can see only my tech one, so it needs to rediscover everything. So I'm going to launch this one more time. So now you can see that the CF4 TVI now has a green light, and if I go back to remote devices, I can see all my remote devices one more time. My remote devices, they are still in the 169.254 address, so they're using a um, uh, self-assigned address. I made a little a little mistake, but I'm going. I still can solve that. You can see that here, my tech one is still showing up in the 169.254. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take care of that in, in, in just a second. It's actually killing one part of my of my presentation. Uh, so I'm gonna close here, and I'm gonna connect to that system. I'm not sending the configuration. I'm just connecting again to that um, uh, to that system. Uh, so if I do that, pretty much my system is still there exactly as it was. Uh, the only thing that is not working is my um, is my tech one because I didn't change the address of the tech one when I had the uh, the opportunity to do that. So my tech one is actually not uh, not talking, so I cannot control these. But I can see that I can I have signals here in my uh, in my meter, so I'm connected again to my system. Everything is working. Everything is happy. So to separate the networks, what I did was that I just uh, uh, I went to device maintenance. Let me show you again. So basically, I went to device maintenance. I selected the unit. I went to the network settings, 
I selected the ABB network, I enabled it, and I click OK. That was all I did. And I didn't change IP addresses, I left the IP addresses of the ABB network set uh, normally. Uh, I'm going to set the IP address on the Tech one uh, to the same network one second, but I have to do it. Uh, I have to do it directly on the Tech one Okay, so I I just changed the IP address of the uh, of the Tech one, so I'm going to connect here again. So now my um, my Tech one is again control uh, connected, so you can see that I'm moving my fader directly from the tech one one more time. And I can verify that if I go to device maintenance uh, and I go to remote devices, I did change the IP address of that, uh, of that remote. You can actually see it here. It's now 192.168. So we can see that I have my two remote devices, my, my expanders in the, um, in the 169 and my uh, tech one in the um, in the control network. All right, so let me go back here. Now, separated networks do have certain rules that we need uh, that we need to uh, that we need to be careful with. One is that they must, um, if we separated networks, basically the control and AVD uh, networks must be physically and logically separated. Physically means they cannot go through the same switch. And logically separated means that if I set IP addresses, those IP addresses need to be on different subnets. They cannot be overlapping subnets. So even if we have different switches, they also need to be on different uh, on different subnets. Uh, so there is might be a case that you're con connecting since uh, since our devices they do support DHCP. Uh, we can certainly use DHCP for uh, for separated networks. Now, if we set our device to uh, DHCP to obtain an IP address automatically on the control network and the, and also on the AVB network, we need to have a DHCP server at least on one of those networks. And the reason is that if we don't have one, both networks are going to react exactly the same, and both are going to get an address in the link local range in the 169.254 and those are not going to be logically separated. So if we're go going to be using DHCP, we need to have a DHCP server at least on one of those networks. Generally speaking, if we are connecting our systems to an existing building network, probably there's already a DHCP server. So you can actually put everything on, obtain an IP address automatically, connect your remote uh, expanders directly to the ABB network and you should be ready to go. And as I said before, if we detect a conflict, the ABB interface is going to be deactivated. So for instance, if we detect that, um, that there is an IP conflict or that we can see the control network when they're separated, the, AV, the system is going to detect that and we're going to uh, disable the ABB, uh, the ABB network to go back to the converge, uh, to the converge mode. Uh, now, when we did this, uh, we found something that happened that I don't necessarily, I, I, I'm not 100% sure if it is something that was intended, but happened, and it's actually kind of like an extra bonus that we have, is that remote control devices can be on either network. Uh, so for instance, in my case here, you saw that when I changed the IP addresses of my two Tessera Fortes, uh, my Tech one disappeared and I was not able to control anything until I changed that IP address of the, um, of the Tech one to put it in the control network. Now, one of the things that happens is that we're using separated networks. Since those are still remote devices, even though they are not sending and receiving audio, they are still remote devices. So we can actually put them on either network. So I could put that tech one on the control network or I can put it on the AVB network. And the only requirement for that is the IP settings of that device is in the subnet of the network that I'm connecting that to. So I'm going to go back here to my system, right? And, oops, what happened? Come on. Well, that was weird. Uh, my screen is not refreshing correctly. I'm going to go to device maintenance. 
And in remote devices, I can see that my tech one is in the 192.168.2. Subnet as the control of my uh, of my uh, of my servers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this device here. I'm going to go to network settings. And I'm going to set to obtain an IP address automatically. And I'm going to click OK here. And now the remote is going to restart. And it's going to get a, 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 a 169.254. I need to wait until it does that. And while, while I wait on that is doing that, I'm going to actually pass the switch from uh, past the uh, the Cat5 cable that is on the control switch, I'm going to put it on an injector that I have also connected to my AVB network. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so it should show up here. So if I go here to remote devices, now I can see that my Tech1 is in the 169.254 address. So it's connected. Uh, so it actually got an IP address in the same subnet as all my audio remote expanders and it's connected actually to the AVB network. And now I'm going to just connect to my system. Uh, so I'll close here. I'm going to connect to, me, to my system. You can see here that I can control you can see my, I control the mute buttons. I can go again and control volumes. I'm controlling again a volume on my, uh, with the Tech 1, I'm controlling the volumes of the system, even though the Tech 1 is connected to the ABB network. Uh, so that is it for me today. Uh, as always, once I log off from here, you're going to get a little questionnaire so you can actually rate this class, tell me what you think about it, uh, other things that you would like to see on these, uh, on these online classes. So I'll be back in about a month with another class. I hope to see you then. Thanks. Goodbye.